Okay, so in class, what we are going to use is not real oil paint. It's called water mixable oil paint. So real oil paint obviously has oil in it, and you can't just wash your brushes off with water because oil and water don't mix. And so this is a relatively newer technology where it acts like oil paint even though it's not. Real oil paint, you have to use turpentine or a paint thinner to clean out your brushes, and you're cleaning the stuff out with highly toxic, bad-for-you materials. Um, you ingest it, it, it's really bad, it can seep into your skin, it, it, you don't want those kind of chemicals getting into your body. So we avoid those completely. Oil paint, real oil paint stays wet for a very long time and that's a benefit of oil paint that everybody loves because when you're trying to work on an area and get it to be really realistic, you need time to do that and you want it to stay wet. These do not stay wet as long as real oil paint, but it should still be wet tomorrow when we're working on it a little bit more. It depends on the colors. Some colors dry faster. Black, it takes a month to dry. If you just were to pile on just a bunch of black, it, it it never seems to dry. So the benefit of being able to have paint that stays wet for longer than something like acrylic and being able to wash your brushes out with water, that's why we're choosing this material. Okay. So we are using cadmium red today. We're using titanium white, ultramarine blue, and then I love yellow ochre, so we're not using the pure yellow. We're using yellow ochre because I think that this goes well with our reference photo. So when you set up your palette, you really want to think about where you're putting your colors. And I like to put the white more towards the middle and then the other colors surrounding it. So let me get one that is a little bit more like that. Um, so something like that. Notice how we're not using black. What do you think we're going to do for black? We're going to what? We're going to mix it. But when you look at all the colors, nothing looks dark like black, right? The weird thing is with oil paint, when you mix the red and the ultramarine blue together, it looks like black. So it actually has the illusion that it's darker than, than either one of the colors on its own. If we had a burnt umber, that's also a good one to mix with the blue to get a super, super dark black. You really want to, in your artworks, when it comes to painting, stay away from black because when it starts to mix into areas that are lighter in value, it starts to look gray and it looks really gross. Where if you mix your own, so that's going to be a very dark purple and it, it goes into a lighter value area, it just has a purple tint instead of this really mucky, murky looking value. You also need to consider your brushes. So the oil paint that we're using today is kind of thick. And so you want brushes that are not floppy like watercolor. You want something that is a little bit stronger. And so I tend to like to use um, these flat brushes that are a little bit smaller. And then we can get some sort of rounded pointed brush. So these are going to be my paint brushes of choice for this project. There are also really small ones that you're probably not going to use until you're trying to get little itty bitty tiny details in it. So there should be one of these in each kit that will be used later. If you don't have a brush in your kit that you want, you can go up to the sink and you can grab different brushes as we do this um, so that you're happy with what you're using. These longer brushes are a little bit more floppy and it's going to be harder to push the materials around because it is that thicker material. The shorter brushes are a little bit um, more capable of, of moving it around the paper. Okay. So I got my two brushes. You guys all need to make sure that you have a paper towel. It doesn't have to be huge and you have your cup of water. The first thing that we're going to do is, is obviously we need to draw this onto our canvas. Now there are two sides to this canvas. One, and we're using scraps, so you might have one that has paint on it, like uh, like this one was previously painted on, and that's fine. You can go right on over it with what we're doing today, or you can use the back of it. The white side is primed, and then the back side is not primed. And so primed means it, ha it has a layer of gesso paint over it, and that makes it so that the paint doesn't 
keep absorbing into the canvas. And so you can use either side for today. So if you have like a really messy, messy side, then you can use the back side. You're just going to have to apply a little bit more paint because it's going to soak in a little bit more. Mine was a pretty messy one from last period, like this one, but you can see how it just goes right over it and you can't really see whatever might be in the back of the canvas. So this was previously painted on. So use whatever side you want for this, but when we do our real project, we're going to use the primed side of the canvas so that we don't have to deal with it soaking back in. Here is my completed example of where we're headed with this. And I want all of these to look the same. Normally I would have you freehand this out, but I, I want to go for that photorealism and I don't want to spend a lot of time sketching this out. I want us to just like get it perfect to begin with. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just do a transfer where you're going to scribble on the back with a pencil. And your scribble doesn't have to be completely dark, but you can't have gaps in it like this. So scribble, get it all coated. You're we're doing that paper on the scribbling on the back yeah, of the paper? Yeah, right on the back of our reference photo that we're all using. <laughs> and making sure you don't have any gaps. You don't want to do it too light either because then it won't transfer very well, but it doesn't have to be super thick either. So about what I have going on in here, kind of filling in any big gaps that I have. Then you're going to try to line it up over the area that has the photo. So I have this extra white space over here. I'm going to try not to line it up back there on that corner. So I'm going to try to line it up on the corner where I see, like just so it's right underneath the photo part, not underneath this part up here. So right about there. And again, if you have a primed side, make sure that that's up. And when you trace this on, it's not a good idea to use a mechanical pencil because it's too soft. You can trace with a pen if you want to or your pencil. And then it should transfer that graphite on the back wherever we're putting that pressure. You'll notice it's a little bit harder to trace on the canvas because of all the bumps on the canvas. So just take your time and make sure you're tracing it really well. Right along that edge. So I'm tracing right around the grape, and I'm also going to trace very carefully along the edge of that reflection, because that would be good to know. Here it's kind of blurry, so I just have to make a choice. I'm going to go on the outer edge of where I see that light. I'm also going to carefully trace down the stem. If you're not sure if it's transferring, you can always kind of hold it down without letting it wiggle and then check and see if your lines are transferring. If they're not, then you might not have put enough graphite. I'm going to trace around the edge, and it's a blurry shadow, but I'm going to trace around the darkest part of that edge. So I'm making a guess on where that would be. So right where the dark transitions to that lighter value. And I'm also going to trace all of those marks on the, the surface of the table in the photo. Mine as well. And then always check and make sure everything transferred before you let go because it's really hard to line it back up later on. I think that's okay. You could go back and darken up these lines if you feel like you need to, but if you can see it even just a little, that's probably going to be good enough. 
and let's go ahead and get started. So when you set up your palette, you have the white maybe towards the middle, and then you have the colors going around it. And you're going to pull colors together when you're mixing them. And so when you look at my other palette, I didn't take the entire clump. And if I needed a certain red, I didn't turn the whole clump into that red. I just mixed colors in different locations inside my palette. Because if you take that whole clump and you turn that color, then you have no more pure red. All right. This stuff goes really far. And the reason why you also don't want to put a ton of paint inside your palette is after this starts to dry, it becomes mucky and kind of, I don't know, like gooey in a way where you can't mix it very well. And so if you got a ton of paint that you're like, I'm going to use all of this paint for the whole entire project and I don't have to get more, well, it's drying a little bit more every day and then it's not going to blend that well for you later on. So you want to take just little bits of paint and go back up and get more paint as you need to um, so that you always have that fresh paint to work with. Now typically when you're working with this oil kind of paint, um, like I said, when it starts to get dry, it gets harder to blend. You technically want to finish a whole area in one sitting so that we don't have to work on it the next day, but we're going to have that issue today where we're probably not going to have enough time and then tomorrow um, depending on how wet it is, we might have to add a few more details to the part of the grape. But we're just going to do our best with whatever time we have. When you start to paint, you want to make sure that you first analyze your grape for all of the details that you see. And so when I'm looking at this, we have the obvious reflection, but I want you to look really close and I want you to see the reflected light. So this light is bouncing from here on the table and it's reflecting back up onto the grape and it's making it slightly more yellow. And then you have the shadow edge, and everything has a shadow edge. So on this, it's a darkest shadow, and it wraps around in like a backward C shape up to the top of the grape. And then you have these more middle values all in between. When you start painting, you don't want to just take this red, let's say, and paint the entire thing red. Because when you try to lighten up this spot, you're competing with that red that keeps wanting to rise up to the surface. And then if you had this all painted red and you're trying to make this dark, well, you have this lighter red that, again, keeps rising up to the surface. So you want to separate this up into the major values that you see. And so anything that you're working with, separate up the major values. Look for your shadow edge. Even if I was painting a person, I need to look for that shadow edge. Where does it hit? If I was painting an arm, it's not going to be the darkest right on the edge because of the reflected light. So reflected light, then the shadow edge, I'm looking for it somewhere. So after you've really analyzed every single one of these bumps and, and shapes that are in there, then, then you have the idea of, okay, these are the things I need to capture later on. When I was an Art One student, I remember thinking, this is as good as my art's going to get because I looked at every single bump and value change and detail I possibly could. But then by the time I was in Art 4, I looked back at my drawings in Art 1, and I, it was amazing how much I grew. And I grew the most because I learned how to see. I learned how to really look at these very subtle, to slow down and look at all the little subtle shapes. The more you see, the sooner you see it, the better your art is going to be. Um, so really take that time and say, I am going to capture, I'm going to do whatever it takes to capture every little bump and ding and dip that I see inside of my painting that I'm doing, all right? There are kids that kind of put half focus on it, and they just look at the general shapes, and they say, okay, Miss Campbell, I'm done, but they didn't look hard enough, okay? So go there. Look as hard as you possibly can. We're going to go ahead and start with placing that reflection on there. And so what we do is we pull the paint out from our palette and we start mixing it together. And so we want to get it to be super light. So I'm just pulling those two together. If your color is really far away, you can just like do it off to the side, but do it near the red. So this is going to be where our light red values end up being. If you want to, you can put a little dot on the photo, and you can see at that point. So I'm not trying to get that bright, bright reflection, but I'm trying to get that value next to it. So you can see if you have the value right. 
The danger of putting too many dots on this is then you can't see what you're doing. I'm even going to try to like wipe it off a little bit if I can um, so that it's not going to be there later um, so I can really see that full picture. And mine was pretty good, uh, but at this point you might have to get a little lighter or a little darker so you're going to pull more white or more red. And then I want you to go ahead and paint in that reflection shape and try to stay inside of your line. You're going to notice that the canvas has a bump and it's hard to get a nice straight edge. But you're going to just try to add enough paint so that it goes into those holes. You don't want to put, you don't want to pile the paint on thick. That is like one of the biggest mistakes you can make in an oil painting. Because if I have this thick mess of paint, when I try to blend it into another color, I'm swirling into these gobs and layers of paint. But then you don't want to have not enough. Not enough would be, I can still see holes in the, in the canvas. I see white little holes showing through. So put on a thin layer that's thick enough to just cover the canvas without having these fuzzy white little spots showing through. Okay, so once you get that on there. And now it looks really dark, right? Because it's surrounded by all of the white canvas. It's going to look darker because of that. Where nothing on here is very white, that makes this look lighter. As long as you put the little dot on there and it matches, you're good to go. Um, just know it is going to look dark when you look at it this way. Or oh, that little dot is super light. Um, and you could go ahead at this point if you wanted to. You could take a little bit of the white and you could just try to put that little reflection on so you don't have to revisit it later. And I'm just dabbing, dabbing the white on. I don't have very much on my brush. I see it lighter right there. And we don't have to worry about that later on if you want to. Especially because our brush is kind of clean right now. Then we're going to go to the next value. So we're going to jump from, we'll call this value 1, uh, from a scale of 0 to 5. 0 would be pure white, 1 would be light, 3 would be middle values, and then 5 would be black. We're going to say this is like a value 3, and we're going to try to paint anything that is this value right here. We don't want it to look like Candyland, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mix in an area. I'm going to mix a red, and but I think it's a little bit lighter than that. So I'm going to pull just a little bit of white into there. I'm going to mix enough. This is going to be a popular color that you're going to use quite often, but don't you don't have to mix a ton. And then I'm going to put a little bit of blue in there. So it's a little bit of white in the red, little tiny bit of blue. We want it to still look red. But I don't want it to look like a pure color necessarily. So I'm going to brown it down. So right now we have like a slightly purple color, right? Because I put blue and red together. And it's, I mean, very, very slight. I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow to brown it down. And when I say a little, just a little bit, because that's going to knock it down from looking like bright Candyland colors. So basically I have mostly red, little tiny bit of white, little tiny bit of blue, and a little tiny bit of yellow. And the yellow is just to, to brown it down. So whatever color you're mixing, you look at the color wheel, because you say I need to brown it down a little bit, you go the opposite. So I said it was slightly purple. So opposite of purple would be adding yellow. Then I'm going to block in the colors. You could always put like a little a little dab, like right oops, right there, and see if it blends in. So I have a little bit of white mixed in. And if it's good, if it's too bright, add more red, add more blue, um, add more a little tiny bit of yellow. So just make sure that it's not too light, it's not too dark. And then we're going to start blocking it in. And I'm not painting everything. I'm just painting anything that's that middle value. So I'm really looking at what that shape looks like. I'm carefully going around. And it looks kind of thin because you can see all the canvas showing through. So I might, after I get this on there, I'm going to probably add another layer of that red on there to get it just a little thicker. 
But this whole side has that red. So I kind of already ran out, so I'm going to just make more. And it's okay if you keep running out and having to make more, because that's how you're going to get good at this. And it'll just take you a second. If it doesn't match perfectly, it's okay, because we're going to play around with the values anyway. Trying to go around that reflection, get rid of all of the fuzziness. I don't want the reflection to get too small, so I'm being very, very cautious. I'm going to be careful. At some point, I need to figure out where I'm going to end the middle value because that's where the, the darkest value is going to start. So I'm not painting everything this color. I'm trying to make some sort of division in my head of where the, the medium and the dark values are going to be. I like to turn my canvas so when I'm working on the edges, it's like the flat part of the brush is touching that because then I can kind of jam the color into those grooves of the canvas a little bit more. Now the bumps on the canvas, because you might be thinking, yeah, why don't why don't we just use flaps, something flat? Why, these bumps are kind of hard to, to use on the edges. But if you were to use something flat, it doesn't blend as nice. So these bumps actually help you. It's kind of like a little technology. It helps you with the blending process. And if you are doing this alone, you might have had the red come out a little bit more or be a little bit shorter than me, um, than what I have. Uh, so it just needs to ish, where does the red kind of end from that, that separation between the black? So that's our middle value. And then if it's too thin, you can add a little bit more, but we're going to have that detail, that detail value on there as well. All right, now this is where we're not using black. If you have to in a painting, if you have to use black, then you use it. But if you can get away with not using it, that's the best scenario. Now, I have some white mixed into this brush, and I don't want anything to get light when I'm mixing the next color. So I'm going to just take my towel and I'm going to wipe it clean. It's not really a good idea to be working with this stuff with a very wet brush. So if you were to clean off your brush, you'd want to dry it really well because then it's gonna, it kind of makes everything look lighter when you're painting and then when it dries, it dries a little bit like a watercolor look. It's, it's like see-through in a way. So we don't really want to use too much water on this. I'll tell you when you can use water, but now is not the time. So I wiped that off clean and now I'm taking the blue and kind of dragging it out into the spot where I'm going to start mixing. You can even just take a chunk and then, you know, stick it down somewhere else in your palette. And then I am going to drag some of the red over to it. This is going to be mostly, mostly blue. And you'll see when you start mixing it in your palette that it turns to like a black. I don't know if it's an optical illusion, why it does that, but it just does. If we were using more colors than just this, I would, I choose the blue with burnt umber to get the blackest of the blacks. But we don't need that right now. This is going to be dark enough. So then you want to make sure that you are adding this to the darker area. And when you start painting, you'll see how dark it actually looks. And I am just, wherever I see the darkest of the values, that's where I'm adding it. In this backwards C shape. So this color is mostly blue with a little bit of red. 
Again, I turn my canvas so that I can get a cleaner edge. You're getting used to right now feeling how much paint you should be applying. If it's really see-through looking, then you might put a little bit more paint on there. And I'm getting rid of all of these white little dots. Just blocking in the color first. And again, the reason why we wouldn't have wanted to paint the whole thing that middle value is because at this point, if there is red underneath it, that red would keep pulling through and keep making this lighter. And we don't really want that. And then at this point, it looks kind of bad, right? Like, ooh, like this looks nothing like the photo. Um, but that's when we're going to start doing that detail part of the layer. And this is what's so nice about the oil paint staying wet for us for a little while. All right, so now we are really focused on that detail. I'm going to wipe my brush again because I don't want a ton of paint on my brush. And right now we have the dark on there. So you don't have to wipe it all off, but just if you have gobs of it, I had gobs of it. Um, we are just going to start pulling the black to wherever it needs to be. So see how I have it wraps around right here and mine is missing? But I'm just going to start taking this and I'm going to start pulling it where it needs to go with my brush. You can use a pointed one. I still, I like to use this as much as I feel comfortable using it first. Um, and then moving to the, the pointed one the, or the rounded brush. And then here I'm just going to, whatever's left on my brush, okay that was maybe too much so I'm going to wipe my brush again. I'm trying to get this slightly darker value right here. And I'm slowing down and I'm really looking at all the details that are here. Nothing here is this light, so I'm going to pull some of the darkness. And one way to get rid of an edge is you have the light side and the dark side and you take your brush and you span between the two. So if I have a line between the two here, I have the brush right in the middle of that gap and I can just brush over it. And that'll start blending that edge. Every time I go over it, it blends it a little bit more. But I need to pull some of this darkness. And so I'm taking it and I'm pulling it out. If you don't have enough to pull out, then you can always put a little bit more dark on there, which I might have to do. So I'm pulling all of that out. I'm actually kind of just dabbing. And I like this flat brush because as I start pulling it out, so if you guys all look up here for a sec, as I start pulling it out right here, notice all these little lines that are there. So I'm kind of pulling it out, but I'm also creating those lines. And then nothing is this light here, so I'm going to pull some of this down. If you have chunks or layers, like thick layers of this dark stuff, then you're going to be pulling, it's going to like pull too much, and you won't be able to control it. So pulling that down. Down by that reflected light, I want it to kind of jump in value. So I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to go right between those two values with the brush. And I want it to, I'm just going to keep going straight down that gap and it's going to give it a quick fade. So my brush is half on the red and half on the black. Just going down several times. Making sure I'm not going down in different parts. I'm just going down the same path. And then it gives it a quick, a quick fade right there. Once you are done adding, because you have to start with something. You could have started with the light or whatever. Um, but once you're starting to finish up everything you see with the dark, then you can go back in and, and that's when I would clean my brush and get the light red and then add whatever I might be missing. So, but right now I'm saying, okay, where is this darkness needing to be blotted? You blot it, you tap. You tap it on there, you smudge it on there, whatever you need to tell yourself in your head that you gotta do. I'm just using whatever's on that brush and I start with that little bit at it. If it's not getting dark enough, then I can just grab some more. I can even grab a little bit from this darker patch right there. And I'm just really trying to add that on. 
Now I could easily go too far and then I'll have to go back and I'll have to add some more red. So don't be afraid to grab, like, I need just a tiny bit more of the dark, so I'm going to just, in the corner of this brush, grab a teeny tiny bit and start dabbing and dashing it on. Always kind of take a look, like, at the whole thing. Like, stop, take a look at the whole thing and say, in general, like, am I not dark enough in a certain area? Do I need to darken it up? So stop, take a look, and see what might be missing. Okay, so quick recap of the stages of, of this project. Remember, we scribbled on the back of the original reference photo just for consistency across the, across the classroom. When we do the project, you guys are going to actually draw it, not trace it, because it's going to be larger in size. And then you just stuck this on, if you had a gessoed side, remember the gesso is the wider side, you would stick it on there and you would trace it. But these are scraps, so you might have something that had paint on it from before um, and that's just fine because this is all just learning how to use the materials. Then we did the reflection like this kid did. Then we started blocking in the general values and so what we did was we looked at the original and we're like okay this is the lighter value, our middle values, and our darker values. So when I did this I made the middle value go all the way to the value 4 so the value 4 is right next to the 5 is just the black area. So I made my red go all the way to where it just got pretty black. And then it creeped around here and whatever was left, that black shape, um, I left that alone, mixed up the color, and then we got to this point. Now we're going to push and pull and blend. We talked about blending. If you want a quick blend, you can wipe off your brush. And you can span, so if I wanted this to blend into the red, the dark to the red, but I want it to be just a fuzzy edge, a quick jump, I would put half the brush on the dark side and half the brush on the light side, and I would just keep going down that edge until it, it just happens to blend. Other ways to blend is kind of like circles or pulling out value. So if I have this darker value and it's wet and this is light, I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to just kind of pull it right on out. I could do that with circles. So I'm grabbing some of that color and I'm swirling it back down. Or I can just take some more of that paint if it's not moving and I can dab just a little bit on, but I don't want to do too much. So I have a little tiny bit there and I'm going to just kind of smear it around. If I get too dark at this point, then I can just add more red to it. So you're going to try to get the right value if you go too much in one direction, just put some more of the other value back on there. And this is still pretty dark, guys. See, this is a value 4 in here. And then I got to pull some more darks into our middle values. And I just keep doing this wherever I see something. Remember, the key here is looking at every little detail you possibly can and trying to capture that. In the previous periods, the main things that I noticed um, were they were getting way too smooth. Everything was blended and there weren't any little details in there. And what I mean by that is there's smaller little shapes and there's little lines kind of forming at the bottom of this grate that kind of um, go out to the left. And they were making everything smooth and they weren't getting those blemishes in there. If you make it perfectly smooth, it's going to look fake. And so after you get the general values on, then you can start adding all of those blemishes and details. I mean, I try to get them a little bit as I go. So as I'm pulling this out, I'm trying to get it to look like a little kind of like line patter pattern down here. So you can attempt it. Like here I see it kind of comes in and there's like this other little darker shape right there. I see that I didn't get dark enough on the top edge. The other thing that I noticed that some students were doing wrong 
was um, when it comes to your value five, their five didn't look black. And I think what was happening was some of their white was getting mixed in. So maybe they had a dirty brush and it was getting mixed into that blue and red combo and it was making it look too light in value. So make sure that you clean off your brush, you wipe it off when you're trying to get that super, super dark value around here. So you're just trying to blend, pull, push. I'm just, I want a soft blend right there, so I'm just kind of going down the, the gap between the two edges, going back and forth. Sometimes I take a look at it overall. Sometimes I stand up and I look at it from farther away because then you can see your mistakes. Or if you take a picture of it, the two together, in a photo it gives you a new perspective and then you can see your, your mistakes at that point. Sometimes when it dries, a value might dry a little bit too light and that could be a, an issue. And then you have to go back later and, and darken it up. So I'm really just trying to look at and blend out and get more and more details as I go. I've been using that flat brush this whole time because I, I like how I can get like a crisper edge and it's a little bit of a stronger brush. But at this point I might start moving on to the smaller rounded brush. And I notice on the reflected light, it has a little bit of the table color bouncing up onto it. So I'm going to take the red and mix a little bit of that ochre in there. And the red isn't too bright either there. Um, so I might put a little tiny bit of blue just to darken it down. And then I'm going to put a little bit of that yellow ochre reflecting right there. And it's very subtle. And a lot of kids are like, eh, but it's not like, there's not that much, like it's not that big of a deal. It's like all these little tiny details add up where people will, will see it and it looks just more natural because you have that reflected light. So I'm gonna maybe go a little bit brighter. And before I start trying to blend, I always wipe off, I wipe off my brush so I'm not having gobs of paint go on there. And then even a little bit brighter. Remember, if you have too much paint on there, it starts to create an issue when you're trying to blend, and then then you just can't easily mix the colors together. But if you don't have enough paint, then that's another issue too. You can't blend either with that. So just keep refining and refining. I see other reflections and other shapes in there. So I'm mixing like little tiny bits of color. And I notice up by the reflection is a little bit of a milky, kind of a milky white. It's like, a, it's not the brightest reflection, but there's something up here that I want to put on there. And I'm going to just try to look at the shape and match it. Always just do what you see. And at this point, I'm kind of just tapping the color on. And I'm not worried about this looking smooth. I don't want it to look smooth. I want it to look like all of these shapes and blemishes that I see. I see a little bit of the yellow ochre color, so I'm gonna mix it with the red again, like I did on the reflected light. And I'm gonna put that in the front of the grape by the stem, maybe even lighter, because that red looks a little bit like it has a tiny bit of a yellow in there. Still trying to maintain those streaks. I would avoid using a watery brush as much as possible because it, for two reasons. If you have a watery brush and you're painting, sometimes it um, makes it look like watercolor and see-through. Um, but then it also makes the value lighter than it is in reality. And then when it dries, it dries darker. And so it's hard to paint when you don't know what value you're actually working with. Okay. So all you're doing is seeing what little details you're missing and then Sticking them on, doing using whatever you possibly can to, to make it work. So 
If it's not bright enough, add more, more lights. If it's not dark enough, add more darks. In the end, you're not thinking about the whole thing being smooth. At, at the middle, it's okay, blend what you need to blend, but then start getting all those detailed shapes. And then when you're close to everything looking right, you're going to take a little bit more of white and yellow ochre with hardly any red mixed in. It's going to be pretty light. And then there is like dust on the front of the, the grape by the stem. And I'm just going to kind of pat some of that color on. I'm going to get even brighter. Trying to imitate whatever this stuff is. Another problem that I noticed um, was that some kids weren't careful about painting along the line. Either they fell short or they painted way outside of it because it is hard to get the paint to be nice and against your pencil line. Just take the time to do that when you're working. While I'm here, I'm going to take that dark color and our dark color is always the red and the blue, but mostly it's blue. And I am going to drag it across very thin, as thin as I can, the base of the stem because it looks like it has a little darker kind of crack right next to it. The only time that I would really work with a damp, a damp brush would be on edges. So if you are having a really hard time keeping the edges of this clean, with whatever color you were using, like maybe I was using that really dark value. If I had a little bit of dampness on my brush, as I went along these edges, it would fill in a little bit more crisp into the pockets of the canvas so that you can kind of clean that up. But that's really the only time I would have water on my brush. Okay, so I'm going to start you off on the background today, and then I'm going to kind of go quickly through the rest of the steps. And so at that point, you'll just watch me, and then you'll finish up the steps on your own. So the background is going to use a lot of white and a lot of yellow ochre and just a little bit of the red. And we're going to start off by blocking in color like we had done before. Make sure that you don't accidentally color in your shadow because then it will be too light of a value and it will be hard to get it dark after that. So try to avoid this when we're coloring it in. It's a little lighter here. And then I would make it light all the way up to this point because you see how there's like white patches in there. So make it white up to this point or lighter all the way down to this point. So... Go ahead and take the yellow ochre and the white and mix it off into the side and then you're going to just put a little tiny bit of red in there. Grab some of that red. You're probably, if you're working on the unprimed side of the canvas, you're probably going to need a lot of this color. And so what I'm aiming for first is that darker color. And you can always put a little dot up there and see if you if you got it pretty close. Mine's almost there. You just need to get a little bit lighter with it. So mostly yellow ochre, a little bit of red. A little more red. And then so right about here. On over this is what I want you to use for this color this is for you so I already kind of ran out so just make enough and then anything that value you're gonna coat it This 
this is where it's going to start getting a little bit messy because we don't have an edge to kind of hold on to. So eventually when we get this coat on here, we're going to have to just kind of hold it on the corner of the canvas. When I'm trying to get that edge to be nice, so if you have any fuzzy edges at this point on your grape, you're gonna try to get it to be nice and clean. I always use this flat brush and I go up next to the edge with the tip of the brush. If it's still fuzzy, then you can go back with the smaller brush with a little bit of water on it so it's just barely damp. And you gotta clean up your edges as we go. Spread out the paint. We don't want it to have gobs of paint everywhere. You're probably gonna get the table messy today so just at the end of the period just remember to, to wipe it clean because we don't want the, the students in the next period to put their sleeves in it If you come across a lighter patch, you can just mix white into that, a little bit of that color that you had and then paint that lighter patch. Remember, avoid the shadow and avoid the stem for now. I'm painting the bottom right hand corner a little bit lighter of a value and then the bottom left corner I'm going to go even lighter. So whatever color I made I'm just going to put more white with it. I need to take this a little higher. My my white, my, my lighter color needs to go higher than I had on it. I'm going to take it about up to there. So if you have a fuzzy edge anywhere, you can take the color of the table that you made, dip your brush into water, and then I just kind of dry my brush back off because we don't want that much water. And then you can go back in and around the edges, and that water will fill in those um, gaps that you're having a hard time getting the paint into, if you need to. If you don't need to, don't do that. Really trying to get nice edges. If 
you're working on the back side of the canvas, just remember it's going to be a little bit harder. But when we work on the project, you'll be on the prime side, so it'll be easier at that point. I'm even going to block in the shadow at this point. And the shadow is going to be the blue and the red, but it's kind of more brown looking. So then you're going to have to add a little bit of yellow. But we don't add too much yellow because we don't want to make it too light. So I'm going to make up the brown, the dark brown. So mostly blue, some red. And then a little bit of the yellow. So they, my yellow kind of made it really light, so I'm going to add a little bit more blue and red to it. The problem with having such short class periods is um, you want to block in and do detail all in one day because if you block it in and you come to school the next day, it could be dry. And then you can't just mush it around the page like you want. So you really kind of try to block the colors in pretty quickly so you have more time to mush it around and make the detail. Make sure there's no little holes of white showing through. Remember the blocking end stage, it always looks awful. It just looks like blocks of value just kind of thrown on there. I'm gonna so go ahead and look up here. I'm gonna show you the different ways that you can blend because it's easier to show you on this kind of a surface. So if I want this to blend nice, I can start at the top. I'm grabbing some of that value, and as I work my way down, I'm losing some of that value, and I'm picking up the other color that's down below. So that's one of the easiest ways to get like a nice value fade. I would not want to go from this side and then start back up to the top without wiping my brush because what value is going to get deposited? It's going to be the lighter one, right? And so I wipe off my brush. Or you can start from the bottom and then work your way back up. But this isn't going to be a nice value fit. I need to add some white or a lighter value in here anyway, but I want you to see how you get like a nice fade from darker to lighter. The quick transition fade would be half my brush. So I'm wiping this off again. Half my brush is on one value, the other half is on the other value, so on the lighter and the darker. And then if I just went right along that edge, and I keep going on that same path, it blends it, it makes the edge fuzzy, but it's a quick jump from this to that with a, a slightly fuzzy blend. The more I go over that, the more blended it's going to be. You see that? How it's just getting smoother and smoother of a transition. So there's that way. Um, there is also, like if I was over here, I could do circles. And I could go down and blend it that way or just dab colors on where, where they are. But those are the main ways to, to blend. So at this point, I'm going to try to blend the, the main values I have together the way that I see them in the photo. And I'm going to add more of a yellow light spot on the right-hand side in the middle. So I'm going to start fine-tuning the major block blocky kind of shapes. So I'm adding that yellowish color right here. We're not adding any of the fine details yet. 
just the base of all of those different values kind of going in there now. So like the bottom looks more like a yellow too, so just white and yellow ochre. And it's pretty, pretty light. These subtle changes in color or value really make your project look good. If you're just using one color, white and black, it's going to look like a dead painting. It's going to just look boring. It's going to look kind of childlike. Um, so you want to make sure that if it's a little yellower in one area, you make it a little yellower in that area. Or if it's a little more red. So just trying to, to change from color to color like you see it. Just made that little area a little bit more yellow. Maybe I'll even go a little bit more intense. Right by the shadow is a reddish kind of color. So I'm going to mix, let's see, I'm going to use my more detailed brush for this. I'm going to try to mix that color so it looks more red. And I already have some blue kind of going into that. And I'm going to add some yellow because I want it to look like a brownish red. So red, yellow, and a little bit of blue. And we'll see if that works. And I'm going to just block that in by adding a little bit. Maybe I want it to be a little bit more yellowy red. Less blue, so I'm adding more red and more yellow. Let's see if that looks better. A little bit more. Mine was looking too brown, so I had to back off on that blue a little. I'm going to take my flat brush. I'm going to kind of pull that out as I blend it. Or I can go right along the edge where I have half my brush on the dark and half my brush on the light. And just kind of pull that. Oops. To work on the transition from the darkest shadow to that lighter shadow, I'm cleaning off my fine tipped brush, drying it off, I don't want it to be too wet, and I'm just going to go right down that seam between the two values, just so that it looks a little bit fuzzy, a little bit blended. We don't want that to look like it's jumping. Every so often, look at the whole entire thing in general and see if there's anything like majorly wrong. Like for mine, I want this to be a little bit lighter here, so I'm going to fix that. And then at this point, I'm going to start adding the, the details on here. So if you just want to look up really quick and see like what I'm going to do here, that'd be good. So I'm going to make that darker table color, the one that was like mostly yellow with some red, so that, that darker value. And all I'm going to do is tap, tap on little lines. I might even switch to my smaller brush because those look kind of like way too big for me. So let me get a smaller pointed brush. And I'm going to just tap on some of that texture that it looks like the table has with the darker value. So once you get to this point, then you can do it. But don't do this until you're like at that final stage where you have a good base. I kind of want it to get a little bit lighter right here. 
because it looks like that. So I'm going to just kind of do that same kind of technique, streak on a little bit more light. Streak on some dark, like the grooves of the table on the bottom. Just little bits of texture. It's like a little darker thing right here. Just texture it up. Each table has a really small brush that I added into your kit. And when it comes to adding these dark lines from the, the marks all over the table, let me get a better photo of this so you can see. Um, go ahead and look up here for this. I'm making that brown again, so it's that combination of the red, yellow, and blue. Um, kind of like right in the middle. I'm going to dip my brush into the water and I'm going to actually get this to be a little bit more liquidy. So I'm adding a little drop of water into my brown that I have right here because I don't want this line to go on very thick and if the paint's thick it's going to be a thick line. So it's, it's washed down a little bit and I know you can't see your pencil marks anymore so you're going to just give it a good guess on where this line's going to go. And down. But it's going to look like this is just sitting on the top of the surface. And so I'm going to show you the trick to get it to look like it's part of the, the painting. So let me get a couple of these on really quick. Okay, so when you're to this point, and it doesn't look good, right? This is like really just like hanging out there. It's not becoming part of the piece. You just wipe your brush off on the paper towel and then make sure that no dark values are on there. If there is a dark value, see I just have a table color on there, but if for some reason you have something super dark, wash it and make sure it's super dry. And then all I'm going to do is just drag my brush right along that and it pushes it down so it becomes part of the piece. So it's no longer just sitting on the surface. And again, I'm going to just kind of I wiped off my brush and I'm just going to push it down a little bit. So what we're doing is like barely blending these in. Even this one. I'm pushing it down so it's becoming part of the piece. Wipe off my brush and then go across. If it goes away too much you can always um, add more but it shouldn't really go away too much. I'm going to go ahead and just show you right now how to do the stem, and then you're going to spend the rest of the time just doing this all on your own, okay? So if you guys want to look up here real quick for the stem, and then go back and do whatever step you need, that would be good. So for the stem, we haven't used any green yet, but mostly this stem, oops, I have too much water on my brush, most of the stem is that yellow ochre, and a slight hint of a green. So I'm just taking hardly any of this blue, mixing it in, oopsie, that's like crazy. Uh, mixing it in with the yellow so it just has like that bit of a green tint and it's pretty light. It is such a thin piece of, of that stick that I am going to use a little bit of water because I want those clean edges and I don't I don't want this line to get super thick. So I am too much water. So let me get a little bit more. So I'm just gonna put a base and this time when I block it in, it's just gonna be the same color all the way down. Let me get that on real quick. So I'm not blocking in since it's so small, I'm not blocking in the shadows or anything like that. I'm just gonna add them on top. So I have that general color. Then it's going to be, it looks like a shadow that has like, it's like a reddish brown. So I'm getting that red. I'm taking some of that brown that I already made or you can make up another brown. A little bit of like a reddish ochre kind of color. Let's see if that's gonna be good enough or not. And then on the bottom, cause that's away from the light, I'm gonna just start streaking in that shadow. 
and it kind of comes again right here and this is going to help make the stick look like and I, I'm not doing it in every inch of it just kind of where I see that red ish color and there's like a little bit on the top and then be very careful to try to get and I might even grab that tiny brush that you guys are sharing clean that off still too wet and I might even do some lines oops I got nothing on this part because that's what it kind of just looks like and then of course you're going to put little details on there but um, what you're going to do is take that reddish color once you got the base all looking good and you're going to put the red dots and if you can put a little white dot in the center of that red dot for the reflection even though it's really small that would be good. So then you just add the red dots all the way down. So those would be the colors that you're using. And that's basically it for the tutorial. Are there any questions on this? Okay, so basically contour lines, whatever shape you're working on, you block it in with whatever values are there. And then you push and pull and start doing more of the details. And then the final coat would be all the little tiny details. Um, so you work your way from basic blocks all the way to finer and finer details.